Hey guys, in this tutorial I will show you how to create a voxel renderer using particles with the Unity VFX graph. Be aware, the Unity VFX graph utilizes shaders heavily, so this solution is not likely to work with WebGL for the time being. You can accomplish this same thing much easier with Unity's Shuriken particle system, which is also compatible with WebGL. But the VFX graph is generally a much more powerful tool, so we'll be using that for this tutorial. So to get things started, you'll want to navigate to Window, Package Manager, and locate the High Definition Rendering Pipeline in the list of packages. Once you've found it, click the Install button in the bottom right corner and wait for it to be added to your project. Unity's High Definition Rendering Pipeline comes with the VFX graph, which we'll need for the voxel renderer. Once the package is installed, close the Package Manager and right-click on your Assets folder and go to Create, Visual Effects, Visual Effect Graph. Name it what you want, and then create a new visual effect in the Unity hierarchy. Now move over to the inspector for your visual effect and set the asset template to the VFX graph you created just before. You'll see the default particle system activate for your visual effect. Double click on the graph to see the VFX graph editor open. This overview can seem daunting at first, but don't let it scare you away. Now select everything in the editor and hit delete. We want to replace the default particle system with an empty particle system. So now right click and select Create Node, System, Empty Particle System. We want to render cubes instead of quads, so delete the default output node and create a new node by right-clicking and selecting Create Node, Context, Output Particle Cube. Hook this up to the rest of our particle system and set the blend mode to opaque. We'll also change the main texture to something other than the default particle. Now let's go to the Spawn node and select it. Then press the spacebar and select Spawn, Single Burst, since we want all our particles to spawn at once. The property we're interested in here is the count property. Move to the plus button in the top left corner and select uint from the dropdown. Rename it to particle count and drag it into the graph. Now just hook it up to the count property and that's done. Now let's move on to the particle initialization. Here we'll set the capacity to something large. For this tutorial, I want to be able to render about 5 million particles, so I'll set it to that. Next, select the initialize particle node and press spacebar. Then search for the Set Position module and select it. With this, we can set the individual positions of every single particle we spawn. Add two more modules the same way we added the Set Position one. This time, we want to add Set Size and Set Color. Once again, these modules work per particle. So at the moment, all our particles are spawned at the zero coordinate, with a size of 0.1 and a white color. We need to change that and add some variation. Go back to the plus menu and create one uint and name it resolution. We're going to store our particles in a texture format, so we need this variable for some math operations we'll be performing on them. Now create two texture 2Ds from the plus menu and name them text pause scale and text color, respectively. Finally, expand all the variables and make them exposed so we can access them outside the graph environment. Now let's set the position, scale, and color per particle. To do this, let's first create a node to reference the current particle ID. Every particle receives a unique ID once spawned starting at zero. Next, I'll drag out the resolution variable and create a multiply node to square the resolution value. This represents the maximum amount of particles that can be represented with the chosen resolution. Since on occasion, the particle ID can reach values beyond the maximum particle count, I'll have the particle ID stay within the bounds with a modulo operation. What comes out of here is now our actual particle ID, and what we'll use to traverse the past in textures. Now we'll create two new nodes. A modulo node to traverse the x-axis of our textures and a division node to traverse the y-axis. The modulo node increments by 1 for every particle to the resolution bounds and restarts at 0 once it reaches the end. The division node increments by 1 every time the modulo node resets, so we basically create a line-by-line -line scanner for our textures this way. We can apply this by now creating two texture loader nodes which read out a single pixel from a texture given the x and y coordinates. For this, we'll drag in our two texture variables and insert them into each corresponding texture loader. Then for each texture loader, hook up the modulo operation to the x-axis and the division operation to the y-axis. Finally, let's hook this thing up to our particle system. Drag the S node from the text pause scale loader to the position module to set each individual particle position. And drag the W component to the size module since we're going to store the size of each particle here. Next, drag the S node of the text color loader to the set color module. This completes our work in the graph. Let's have one last look at the whole thing before we move on to admire our work. Okay, that's enough. Close the graph and go back to the Unity editor. Select the visual effect from the hierarchy and add a new script. 
I'll call mine Point Cloud Renderer. This script will be responsible for populating our visual effect with particles and initializing the visual effect. Open it up and let's add some variables. Two Texture 2D variables for position, scale, and color data, a visual effect for the particle system, a variable resolution to define the texture resolution and the maximum amount of particles, a public float particle size. With this, we'll be able to change the size of individual particles as opposed to the scale of the entire system. Then a boolean to update to check whether we need to reinitialize the particle system. And finally, a uint particle count to determine the amount of particles in our system. In the start method, we'll initialize the visual effect, and that's all for now. In the update method, we check if an update is due, and if it is, we unset the boolean and then we reinitialize the visual effect. We do this so that the existing particles are erased and the new particles are spawned. Then we'll initialize the variables we created in the graph. We use shader.property2id to get the property ID from the variable's name. The second parameter sets the value for that property. You see in the last line that I'm setting the value for the property dimension. This is a typo and it should say resolution. That's it for the update method. Finally, we need a method to populate the visual effect. This method will take in an array of positions and an array of colors. I'm going to set a uniform size for all particles in this example, but you can create whatever kind of method you like. In this method, we need to initialize our textures. For the texture width, I check if the amount of particles to be rendered exceeds our resolution or our maximum width. If it does, the texture width will be set to the maximum resolution, otherwise the texture width will be set to the particle count. The height of the texture is just going to be the particle count divided by the resolution clamped to the range of 1 and the maximum resolution. This way, if the particle count takes up less than a full line, we still get a minimum of one line in our texture, and if the particle count exceeds the maximum resolution, we just erase the excessive particles. The texture format has to be set to RGBA float. This is important for us to pass in full floating point values to the VFX graph. Lastly, write false, and that's that for the first texture. For the other texture, the initialization is identical, so you can just duplicate the line and change the variable name. Now we'll create two integer variables, text width and text height, for ease of use and set them to the width and height of our textures. Now we have to loop through our textures and set each individual pixel with the passed in data. To do this, we first calculate the index for the passed in arrays by writing x plus y times text width. This is basically the reverse of what we did in the VFX graph with modulo and division. Here we're taking x and y coordinates and compressing them down to a single value. Then we can use that index to set the current pixel in our color and position slash scale textures. Keep in mind, textures only accept colors as input, so you need to put the position and scale data in a color object before inserting them into the texture. Let's close the loop now and apply the textures so the changes we made are saved. Then we can set the particle count to the length of either passed in arrays and tell our update method that we made a change and the visual effect needs to be reinitialized. And with that, we're done. I'm going to make a quick example for this tutorial just to test the functionality of the renderer. As you can see, after fixing the issues I noted in the code, you should see something like this. Just a big bundle of particles levitating at their designated positions. For a final demonstration, I downloaded a mesh with several million vertices and rendered it with this system. It didn't come with color data, so I had to generate some random colors for it. It stands to show how many more particles can be rendered with this system as opposed to the shuriken particle system. That'll be it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and of course, a like is always appreciated. With that said, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.